All right, and in three, two, one, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 73 of the Prehistoric Podcast. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Francois Nation. I'm Andrew Sorsdahl. And I'm Thomas Renwick. Our political correspondent in the field. Yeah, our political correspondent in the field. He's back. Yes. For another fucking jump into the fray. Um, all right, so this is our first podcast since we came back from uh, BC, which was a long time ago now. When did we go to BC? That was August. August. Middle of August? Second week of August. Yeah. So if you've heard our other podcast, um, you'll know that my side venture is a thing. Yeah, Uh, that just, that is releasing tomorrow, but I guess that's useless to say right now. Uh, I highly recommend you go back and you watch podcast number 71. Uh, And 72, actually, because we... 72 is good. 72 is a little more... uh, Thoughtful, but seventy-one is mostly it's it's mostly just Francois and Brad saying Andrew's cockrings not <laughs> I'm looking forward to <clears throat> that's, that's making the disclaimer for this one. That one is literally, I would say, probably literally thirty percent. The phrase Andrew's cockrings dot com. It literally thirty yeah, percent of the hour yeah. is just that phrase repeated. <laughs> we kept just saying. Get 5% off a of cockring at andrewscockring.com using the promo code <coughs> andrewscockring.com. Cockrings. <laughs> Cockrings.com. It's not just a singular thing. It's, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I thought it was educational. I learned a lot about cockrings for sure. I and just, the, the prevalence of cockrings, I, I was guess. just totally talking out of my ass. Like, I know very little. I was just fucking saying bullshit trying to be funny. But. Ah, you seem to know a little bit. Well, I know more than the average bear, maybe, but... <laughs> Okay, so uh, just to start things off, there's something that happened in the world of film that I kind of want to talk about that I thought was really interesting. So, as everybody knows, unless you're living under a rock or you're super, super lame, there are new Star Wars movies happening right now. Their Episode 7 came out in 2014. Rogue One last year. 2015. No, okay, so Episode 7 came out in 2015, sorry. Yes. Rogue One came out in 2016. This year we're getting Episode 8. Um, yes. So, uh, if you know anything about... The directors or whatever, probably not. But anyways, the guy who directed episode 7 was J.J. Abrams, famous director. Can do no wrong, has never done a bad movie. Uh, The guy who directed Rogue One was Gareth Edwards. He's the guy who directed Godzilla. Uh, This year, we're getting the guy who directed Looper. His name's Rian Johnson. He's directing episode 8. Ooh, that's exciting. Uh, But all is not well. Everything was going so good. But all is not well in the world of Star Wars now. Really? We've had two, or actually three directors, I guess, get fired by Kathleen Kennedy from Star Wars movies. So uh, next year, the movie that we're getting is another spin-off movie, kind of like Rogue One. It's a solo, that's funny. It's a Han Solo movie. Um, And the guys who were directing it were Phil Lord and what the fuck is his partner's name? Or Matthew, Matthew, Phil Lord and Tim, I can't remember. Anyways, Phil Lord, whoever the fuck your partner is, uh, they're, they're, they're a team of two. They did the Lego movie. They did 21 Jump Street, 22 Jump Street. Uh, and they did Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. They're very funny, and they're known for their sort of irreverent style of randomness. Yeah. Apparently, they didn't mesh well with Kathleen Kennedy, and she, and they were, like, halfway through shooting or something, and she fucking gave them the boot, <laughs> fired them. And now she has Ron Howard, who is also a very storied director, has done lots of things successfully, works very well with studios, Ron Howard does. Uh, he's come in to finish on Solo. Uh. And Colin Trevorrow who's the guy who is directing episode nine. He directed most recently Jurassic World. That would be his biggest claim to fame. Yeah. Uh, he has now been fired from from uh, writing and directing episode nine. Holy fuck. And they've now just, they just officially announced that J.J. Abrams is coming in and he'll be writing and directing episode nine, which I'm super happy about. Like, that's awesome. How much money did they give him for that? I don't, he honestly. He specifically said, like, I'm not, I don't want to. That's not true at all. He said, he said, after episode seven, because he helped, I think he helped with story with episode eight. He was like, I wish I would have done episode eight instead of episode seven. Because Kathleen Kennedy said at the oh, beginning right. of all yeah, this was said. that they wanted a different director for each movie so that it didn't, so that there was no, like, essentially so they could kind of keep an ambiguous style. They didn't want, they wanted to keep that intangibility that is Star Wars. It's like, it's just, it's so accessible that nobody, like, really puts their own stamp on it. It's like, Star Wars is Star Wars, and they all feel the same way. They all feel a certain way. 
But I guess just because of how well J.J. Abrams pulled off Episode 7 and how great he was to work with, that's why they brought him in to finish this, which I'm super happy with. Episode 7 was fucking amazing. And I, I awesome. honestly, after Episode 7, I would have just given him the keys to the fucking <laughs> castle and been like, just do all of them because you do such a good job. I, you know, the more I watch Episode 7, I've watched it several times, the more disillusioned I become with it. Explain. Um, there is just way too much that is almost exactly the same as the other movies. It's, like we, have, it's, like all, it's like we have another desert planet. We have another fucking giant Death Star thing that we yeah. have to blow up. And like, just those two points specifically alone, it's like it's not that it ruined the movie or I'm like, oh, one of those people who's like shitting all over it because that's not where it is. Yeah. For me, it's just like, you had the opportunity to do something even just a little different. Like, maybe instead of a desert planet, it's a jungle planet. Or maybe instead of a, an orb, it's a fucking, some other, like, you know, like, he could have done something yeah, yeah. different, and he didn't do that something different. I, I kind of, I, I, like, I see your point, but I just, like, because when was the last, when was the, Star, the first Star Wars, like? Like episode the, four? Yeah. 79. 79. So, like, it's 78, maybe. It's really, it's long ago. So, like, to, like, capture that nostalgia, like, there, there's something to be said, like, rehashing something, like, on every four years or every year even with, like, a lot of media. They just love pumping out the same thing. But, like, this has been, like, a long time, like, in between. And it, it's nice to, like, throw it back, especially with, like, a new um, studio and a new... Uh, a new studio. Well, like, uh... Well, like Disney owning. Disney. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. okay. And, and new team and Lucas, like, out of it and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, like, if they took it too much in a different direction, I feel like the old fans would have been felt betrayed or something maybe like this is just a safe ball and they pulled it off like yeah I mean I, I ultimately agree like I think introducing a new generation to Star Wars it, 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 it achieved what it needed to achieve however just after having time to like sit and think about it the, the less I'm like this movie is so fucking awesome mm -hmm. and the more I'm like you could have made different choices that would have kept the overall feeling of nostalgia and whatever intact while still doing something a little bit different. Yeah, different tropes. Type just thing. different, just just slightly different. Like, Not just a bigger Death Star? Not just, a, not just well, the, the, whole, <laughs> the whole desert planet thing as well. Yeah. I get that it's a cheap place to film and I, I know, I know okay. logically why you would go with the desert over other locations, but... I mean, money's not an object. No, it's not. <laughs> Star Wars, it, it like should they, be, they, uh, I, I, I don't think they were. They made any decisions based on, like, uh, trying to cut costs. But, no, but like they, they built an entire forest in a studio. That was the most ridiculous thing ever. It was. I think it's one of the largest built sets ever. Yeah. And they sound literally stage, just recreated stage, a forest yeah. inside, which was awesome. And they were just talking about, yeah, it was, we could control the conditions. But it's like I watched that when I watched yeah, that feature, I'm like. You honestly could have just went and done this in the forest. <laughs> yeah, no, like, no. like it's, it's not wild. a huge, huge thing. But anyways, but it's awesome. Like it looked fucking sweet. Um, no, I, I like I definitely feel where you're coming from because I like I said I, I I've said it too because I I can't remember who I listened to who was who gave this talk but there was a guy who was kind of talking about how he felt that sort of like Star Wars ceased to be a a franchise that was pushing. New creative exactly, ideas. Exactly, that's exactly. My Whereas, point. like, you look at episode four, five, six. Obviously, they were the first ones. Each one was different. And then you looked at episode one, two, and three. George Lucas continued to push certain ideas and certain sci-fi ideas, and he was doing new things on screen. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. episode seven very much is sort of a new, like, it's very much a retread. Like, there's nothing on yeah. screen that you haven't seen before. Uh, not to say that it wasn't. The thing is, like, episode seven to me is it's perfected. Like, everything in episode seven is done perfect. Like, it's, like, every action sequence, every, like, it's all, you can just tell it's this, it's this, this mission, this product that was produced for the most mass appeal. And I say that in the most loving way possible, because I, I love episode seven. Like, I, I it was that great. experience in the theater so good. was just unlike anything else. It's, like, they recaptured the magic, the feeling, like, people say that all the time. Star Wars is, like, a feeling you get, and it's, like... Nothing else does it. No other franchise does it. No other franchise will ever do it. It's just, it's, it's this fucking feeling you get in your belly that makes you believe in fucking magic. That's the best way I can describe it. And they did it. They fucking, Kathleen Kennedy, J.J. Abrams, they were able to recapture that feeling of Star Wars, of me being a little kid watching 4, 5, and 6. And it does disappoint sort of the filmmaker side of me and the writing side of me and sort of just 
how many possibilities maybe were missed because yeah. they they decided to go more with the nostalgia side of things and go more with with that whole thing. But honestly, I I think the opportunity because this is only episode seven, it's not episode eight and six. It's not the whole, the whole trilogy hasn't played hasn't played out yet. The story hasn't been told. Well, plus, plus for me, like just to start to interject, but the exactly that and the hope that the, I have hope because of how different and awesome Rogue One was as a story mm-hmm. like the, it was a depressing like intense Star Wars movie like, yeah. I've never seen anything like that in the cartoons or any of the other Star and Wars that's thing, stuff to, to, so, on, on that note it's like while they're doing these this this main trilogy of movies they're doing side stories in which like you said with Rogue One they're, they are pushing the boundaries and they are doing different things and telling stories in this universe yeah. which maybe is a better way so that like because yeah maybe that's a better way to experiment than to like, it's like I feel like George Lucas might have learned this lesson real hard with episode one, two, and three. It was like, yes, the guy experimented a bunch, and people hated him for it. And it's like, yeah, yeah. and where where it's like, I feel like we three we grew up with episode one, two, and three. So episode one through three have a special place in my heart. And I, I episode three is a good episode. I don't care what anybody says. That's just a good movie. But um, episode one, two, and three have a special place in my heart. Always will. They're the Star Wars movies I grew up with seeing in theaters, and they were the ones that made me excited. And like, they all had that great, was it. They all had great things about. And yeah, that's the thing. I like episode one had fucking Darth Maul. It had Qui Gon Jinn. It had the Pod Race. It Jar had Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks was incredible. Um, it's things like that that just made my day. Jar Jar Binks. Um, the intricate, the intricacies of galactic politics and trade. It's very yeah. interesting. Um, the Senate. That that is like the funniest, not even a joke, but just like thing they did with the original trilogy. Or uh, sorry, episode one, two, and three, the prequel trilogy, was like episode one, and episode two had these like long drawn out uh, descriptions Political, that yeah. were like really boring, and so episode three, first word in the thing, war exclamation point. It's like just totally yeah. throws away that other bullshit. So funny. Um, but yeah, and but going back to what we were talking about before with them playing it safe and whatever, I episode seven is the one where I'm just like, you you get to do it with episode seven. Because you need to bring everybody back. You need to yep. get everybody excited again. You need to reintroduce those. You need to get these new characters. You need to reintroduce the old characters. And I think episode eight, hopefully. Yeah, that'll with, be the litmus test. That'll sure. be the one where it's like, are they doing things? I mean, from what I've seen about episode eight, it looks very similar to episode five, which is kind of like, it's weird because it's like, I've, there's no ice planet. I haven't seen anything about an ice planet. <laughs> but I, I actually I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not going to really say too much yeah. of what I know. But anyways, I've just seen a lot of... What I've, from what I've seen, there's a lot of similarities, which is kind of interesting. I've just avoided all. But yeah, the trailer for the movie makes me think that they're going a different route with it. With with the whole, and I'm just going to say the, the last line in episode, the episode 8 trailer is Luke Skywalker going, the Jedi have to end or whatever. Yeah. And that's interesting because it's like, what what does he mean? That that that's To me, that's that's building on that whole lore of the Jedi big. Like that, I feel like they're doing big things as far as the Jedi go and the Force goes. And the more spiritual aspect of the movie, so I'm I'm very interested to see where that goes. And Rian Johnson, incredibly incredibly talented guy. Looper is a fucking amazing science fiction movie. Uh, so yeah, I'm very very excited to see what that guy does with Star Wars because he just has a very unique style. He's very he's kind of a he likes darker subject matter from what from what I can uh, tell. So I mean, it'll be interesting to see what what he does with Star Wars, I guess. Because I think whoever they get to direct also gets a writer credit like I think Rian Johnson also helped to write the script for episode 8 which I think is a great decision I, I, a few things I think are as good as a writer director combo um, yeah I just think that, that's awesome but yeah people being fired in, in, in the, you got these huge directors you got a guy who directed Jurassic World yeah. massive director you got, you got guys who Phil, Phil Lord into, God fuck I wish I could remember this other guy's name um I can't believe I don't know because Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs is one of Drew's favorite movies. So, Tiff, Tiff, Matthew, I don't Chris Miller. Chris Miller. I kept wanting to say Tim Miller, but that's the guy who directed Deadpool. Um, yeah, it's just it's crazy to think that, and these are these are two well, Colin Trevorrow maybe to a lesser extent, but but Phil Lord and Chris Miller, they're guys who only have hit home runs. Like they have never had a box office failure or a critical failure in their careers thus far but it's crazy to think that you have these for lack of a better term because they're young guys too like these wunderkinds in the film industry and they can get fired just like everybody else which is 
Interesting. I think it's just goes to show how much like personalities interacting plays a role in especially something that has to be as connected and like on point as, as filmmaking. Right? And well and Star Wars. It's and just Star like Star Wars specifically too. You yeah. just see how Disney is like yeah, Disney's like we aren't doing we aren't putting up with shit. It's like it's like it has to be at this standard of quality and if we cannot gauge if it is at that standard of quality, you're gone. Like if you will not if you will not adhere to these rules and it's like we don't care your name. Yeah. Your, yeah. And I love it. We it's don't like care it's, what you've done. It, yeah, it's yeah. Marvel does the same thing with with uh, their franchise. It's like uh, with fucking their films. They're, <laughs> with, they're, yeah. What did I say? What well, you said with their franchise, and I'm like, uh, their films. Yeah. Their films for sure. He's <laughs> just the standard quality. It's like kept with their films. What are we talking about? It's all right. I'm it's just right. saying that Marvel, the quality, the standard of quality with Marvel, exists absolutely with their films. Yeah, but, but elsewhere is questionable. But elsewhere is questionable, as in oh, the television. I see. Or, I see. I see. Yeah. 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 Um, sorry. Yeah. They're they're at the <laughs> defenders. <laughs> You're uh, yeah, yeah. The the movies are really fantastic, and they and they very much have a, do a do a very similar thing to what I guess Kevin Feige is doing a very similar thing to what Kathleen Kennedy is doing because Edgar Wright, another guy who's never had a critical or a commercial failure of a movie, he's he done. Fucking Shaun of the Dead. He did Hot Fuzz. The guy does amazing movies. Br- Baby Driver, most recently that I haven't seen. I got to see that. Oh, one. I have to, oh did um, really you good. That Such a good. No, no, I don't think it, I don't think I can yet. But uh, it's good. you did see it? Yeah. Um, he uh, he got fired from Ant Man, and it's like <laughs> that's crazy uh, to think. It's like you that they would fire he Edgar Wright. He's so good. Well, yeah. they always say it all. Like I, I should preface this with saying all of these instances, it's always leftover creative differences. But it's Kathleen Kennedy or Kevin Feige was like, oh. yeah. nope. It is, you know what? It's, it, to be fair, like, yeah, leftover creative differences. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt in that it probably was just that. Like, I doubt it was like, you're shit and you should be. Yeah. Oh, no, no. It was, yeah. it was, it wasn't, they're not, obviously they're not bad, but it's like they were yeah. fired because they wouldn't. Bend the bend the knee essentially. Yeah, it's like, the knee. but I mean, it, it's kind of like if you went to a Fucking if you're working at a department so. store, you're great at your job, but they were like, you have to wear a black shirt, and you were like, I'm gonna wear white shirts, and they're like, wear a black shirt or you're fired, and it's like, guess I'm fired then, and then you leave, yeah. and you're like, yeah, it's creative differences. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like in politics when they say, yeah, family reasons, gotta go back for my family. Yeah, that's like almost all those family all, reasons. That's <laughs> always code for. Caught banging male prostitutes and drugs. I mean, yeah. Creative differences, right? It's just like I like banging male prostitutes and doing drugs, and they're not really about that. So I left over creative differences. In the in the academic world, it's leave of absence. Yeah. Um, He's taking a leave of absence for personal reasons. Yeah, <laughs> he'll be back. At Luther, it was because one 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 teacher left or took a leave of absence because of one of three alleged alleged stories. Um, one was like. Pissing, he got arrested for pissing in public in Vancouver on a teacher thing. Wow. One was that the, he was caught with hookers and cocaine in his hotel room on a ah. teacher thing. And third was... I can't remember what... The, the third was like a little bit more reasonable than the other two. Yeah. But, well, um, pissing in public, that's not that bad. Not well, but like, for sure, like especially if you don't get caught, but apparently he got like arrested for it. That's, yeah. I guess maybe, yeah. Though, I don't know. I attribute everything probably to I want to believe the most outrageous story yeah, but yeah. I also know it was high school and there was a rumor going around that I was a meth head for a while so <laughs> <laughs> take that for what you will yeah I mean I I robbed Cable Post Office so <laughs> I love how there were that's people. a fact though I love how I love how you were so candid about your community service that you had to do people are just like <laughs> he's such a good boy he did so much community service such a good boy. There are people in Cambridge, Saskatchewan, who believe that I did over 300 hours of community service because I oh, broke I into the post office. I, Thomas. I mean, I did. I did do my community service. To be fair, but I mean, that doesn't change the fact that people believe that I did what I did. <laughs> um, that was crazy to me because that was like, because that's the thing. It's like people, people were bugging me about that for months and months and months, months so so long. Now, not the community service, just like the 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 whole post office incident. And then one day I was like, I'm going to go along with this because it's like, this is ridiculous. And so, yeah, I can't remember who the fuck I was with, but I was with like a group of people and I, I went on about it. Like I, like I was no break and smile, no anything, just like kept talking about my community service and what I had to do and like all this shit. 
And I can't believe nobody questioned me on the amount of hours. Because I said, I was like, I have several hundred hours I have to do. Like, it was something ridiculous that I said. So I can't believe nobody questioned me or called me out on that. But I never thought twice about it, saying that. I was just like, of course, everybody knows I'm fucking kidding around. And then, like, a couple months after that, I was in the bar with... Well, I guess I won't name names. But I was in the bar with these two people. And then, then one of them... Like, really casually asked me. It's like, so, like, what What was with that, like, community service? Are you, like, whatever you're doing? And I'm like, I'm like, ha, ha, ha. And I kept doing, they're like, what? Seriously, though. Like, and they're like, no, yeah. but what? And I'm like, no, that was a joke that I told. I, I'm not actually in community service. And they're like, no, I'm pretty sure you did community <laughs> service. Like, pretty sure. Everybody said you are. And that is and how I'm rumors like, are starting. And I'm like, my God. I started a rumor about myself. And anyways, it was just whatever, yeah. Nuts. And I was like, it might as well. Whatever. People thought... People... I, I At least I fictionally repaid my debt to society for a fictional crime I committed. Yeah, just so like I'm you, fair and square. Just like you fictionally do cocaine and are drunk all the time. And <laughs> fictionally you bring home hookers. Like, <laughs> these are things that never, ever happen. Oh, for fuck's Definitely. sake. Definitely. I've got a lovely girlfriend now. We can't be... We gotta... I'm a good Tony, man yes. now. He has a girlfriend that he doesn't even have to pay. You're like, oh, for sure. I'm a deviant. Um, but I want I want to go back to we were t- like just talking about people getting fired. I thought it might be an interesting topic to talk about. Um, either like in school, people we knew who were expelled, or and we don't like not saying any names or anything, not nothing like that. People we knew who were expelled, or jobs we had where people were fired, people we know that have been fired. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. So I don't, I don't know, Thomas. Do you know anybody who's ever expelled or anybody who's fired? No, I don't think I do. No. Actually, no. I mean, like, I got people that should be fired. Like, <laughs> I, at least I have this boss that uh, this is working in Saskatoon at, at some place. Anyways, uh, I used to do like yard work at this big facility. Part of it was removing the ice and like spreading uh, de-icer everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while, my boss would be like, "Hey, you guys should grab that." Uh, de-icer and throw a couple of bags in my back of my truck. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> how, how can I re- like, how can I like say no? Because like he was the form, he was the foreman, not like the head boss, but if I ratted on him, like my bacon's on the line. So I was like, <laughs> I, I guess I'm just going to stick this in the back of your truck. Corruption. Like, fuck. It was, it was bad. You're the guy who's just following orders. I was just following orders. It's, <laughs> but like, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. But How he, about you? he should be fired. <laughs> he should be fired. <laughs> that's, that's pretty sketchy. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he was doing. Uh, no, he was sketchy. No, fuck. He was just taking it for his home. <laughs> taking it home. I mean, to so, use so what, what did you de ice Like, is this an expensive material? Uh, it was like. It's not cheap. Four, 40, 20 kilogram bag, so probably at least 20 to 60 bucks each. I don't know. Oh, that's yeah. nothing. That's uh, nothing. Yeah. Steal them all. At fuck Luther, you. at Luther, we had people who. This is super sketchy. I shouldn't even say that. High school name, but whatever. Um, there was this semi shady practice that I can neither confirm. I can't confirm <laughs> was actually the case, but they would. Re- we regularly in the dorms, especially, get these students who were clearly not cut out for Luther because Luther is an academic and social like challenge. Like you're meant, you're, it's meant to be a prep school for university. You're, you're, it's highly academic, highly intensive, and it's difficult in that way. We would we, we get these parents who thought that Luther was like a hard nose, like a disciplinary, like military, not maybe not military style, but like boarding, it was like a yeah. boarding school and you're going to have like, I can't deal with this. And now you're going to boarding school for them to toughen you up. Yeah. And so we get these kids or just like fuck ups. <laughs> but like, anyways, we get these kids and Brad and I would always bet every semester. I was like, when is this kid going home? And for the first couple, I kept getting hit right. I'm like, ah, he's going. By Thanksgiving, he'll be gone. Or before this break, he'll be gone. And we read our Luther contracts, and we found out that there's a point in the semester that if you get expelled after that point, they can take all your money for the semester. Yeah. And coincidentally, these people who had these yeah. thing, did these things that were expellable offenses early, early, early on in the semester didn't get expelled as they and like the thing is most of them like it's not that they didn't deserve to be expelled it's that they should should have been expelled immediately immediately or like at least before they could take all their money and then yeah. kick them out yeah <laughs> that's really scuzzy 
and, yeah. there's, and then there's always and then there's a purge like there's always and then it's like it's like nobody gets expelled nobody gets expelled and all of a sudden it's like oh we expelled <laughs> yeah 20 kids it, was, like, it wasn't even that, it wasn't even that many it was it was literally one a semester in the dorms mm. vfs had a similar thing but they, they, it was famous there because they always had a purge like it was like their thing was they could keep if you uh stayed in school or if you left school before your first semester was up they would only they would only keep half of your tuition but if you were there a second over your first semester then they kept the whole year's uh money so always the first day of the se- or i guess no we had three sem- we had six semesters a year so so it would be it would have been the third or fourth beginning of the fourth semester beginning of the fourth semester uh there would always be this huge purge and be like oh all these kids are fucking expelled because they could keep the entire year's yeah. tuition but like yeah it, so it was out. bad it was so bad like that's such a sketchy thing. and so many people were afraid they were like no idea if you're gonna get expelled or not because like you, you don't find out until like fucking day one yeah. of whatever well they had to have like a, a thing a list of things that they could expel you for yeah like, there it, was, it can't just be like there was it's like stay 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 no, expelled. There stay, was, stay 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 expelled. The, the things like, everybody most people were expelled for was because attendance I imagine, yeah you, you couldn't be late more than three times in the same class Oh. Uh, Jesus Christ! Yeah, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Like you failed the class if if you were late more than three times, and if you failed the class, <laughs> I get why, but that's fucking hardcore. It, right? it was because we did three semesters every term, so we were doing we were doing we had like three of the same class every week essentially. Yeah. So there's there's no way you could hold down a job. And no, no, no. It would be impossible. No, no. There were some days we were at school nine hours. Like no way. I knew one girl. Who tried and she 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 cleaned buildings at night and never slept but she was also dirt poor and I don't know how she afforded how like yeah. what what her I why she would go to an art school um, arguably the worst investment you can make if you're in a situation where you can't afford no it's stuff. like what like why wouldn't if I like if you can't afford anything do something super safe if that's that's what I mean like get a business degree or something <laughs> that's not safe at all. No, that's, that's, yeah, like, <laughs> that's also just pissing your money down the toilet. Well, it's a very flexible degree, from what I've heard. Like it, it can it, it can be applied to a lot of things. It's flat. Like Businesses, I mean, to yeah. me, like it is flexible. Like, but to me, safe would be like plumbing, electrician. <laughs> oh, like trades. Trades. Yeah. Like don't go to Some, don't don't, that don't is, go don't go to university at all. Yeah, basically. Yeah. University is. Give me a suck. A suck hole money in time well it it definitely is we can talk about a very clear path path university is the way to go if you're like i want to be a lawyer that's like go to university because the only way you're going to get to be a lawyer is you do your undergrad you do well in your undergrad do well in your lsats get accepted to law school yeah or doctor or doctor yeah yeah. like those are two very clear like i need to do x to do y yeah as long as you put in the work you will get there and there's high demand for those. and there's high demand like high demand there's other high paying there's a clear ladder of a career that you can start. It's a fucking long haul, but at least it's a clear, it's path. a clear path. The death. And then when you see all these people who are like, oh, I don't know, I'm just like getting a degree. It's like, I mean, huh. education, I'm never going to be able to say like education is, like no education is better than education. Like that's, that's not always the case. But I feel like a lot of people go to school for the wrong reasons. And, just waste money. Mm-hmm. Talking about it's not even really about time. It's about to me. It's about money. Like, yeah, I feel like you could have spent that money on traveling or something else to get the same positive things that you you would you could that you get out of university. But the same, but like the same like expand your personal ri- expand personal, your horizons yeah, in different ways. Yeah, the same personal development things that you get out of university. That cause I, like, for me, I got a lot of the benefits. A lot of people go to university like independence, learning how to think for myself, like learning how to take care of myself. Well, I got that all in high school when I moved out and was in. Yeah. But I feel like you yeah. can get those same things that everyone should get by going and working or going going abroad and working or just going moving out of the house and living on your own and working or whatever. So uh, this is a crazy tangent that we went on. But, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm that a- sketchy shit. I'm a fan of education, like, like there can be practical, like, 
there, there should be practical ends to education, like, obviously, but no, I think, like, education is an end to itself at times. I mean, like, a higher educated a populace point. is is desirable. And, yeah, but, like, you, you know, that's not for everybody, but, like, if I could stay in school for the rest of my life, like, fuck yeah, <laughs> I w- probably I just, would. <laughs> I just hate academia. Like, I, just I mean, theoretically, you can. Well, yeah, but, you know, like, yeah, I could. There's quite a few people. No one's stopping you. <laughs> but I, yeah, I got obligations. You can just keep deal. enrolling in classes till the day you die. I, like, I guess like the, the idea would be I would then get my master's and then I'd get into teaching or like uh, yeah. That's that's the thing with academia that doesn't piss me off. That's the wrong word, <laughs> but it just seems like it seems like it's parasitic of itself. It's like you're gonna get you're gonna get you're gonna get your undergrad. Why? So I can get my master's. Why do you want to get your master's? So I can teach people. Teach people what? Oh, the thing I get my... The, I'm going to teach... Like, anthropology, for example. Like, I'm going to... I'm going to teach other people anthropology. Well, why do they want to learn anthropology? So they can teach other people anthropology. Like, what's the practical... But isn't that... For like, a lot of things in academia. But I guess if it's academia, then it's just that, so... It, it's kind of a similar, like, method of science. It's just, like, building upon other people's precedences... Yeah, that's, and just that's adding fair. it or tweaking it, and it's it really don't really make revolutionary changes or anything. You just add little tiny bits, or even you don't even add anything. You can just uh, continue the previous thought. Ride the wave. Ride the um, wave. I think the only thing about because because I I I like university and I like school when when it, this is the only thing that pisses me off about school. Let uh, and it's got more to do with just like a, it, it it's. Uh, it's built into school at a fundamental level and it'll never change. But it's more like, let's say somebody wants to be a doctor. Practically to become a doctor, you, f- you fluff about and you waste so much time for like four, three or four years at university essentially, where you're doing these classes that have no bearing on that subject or what you're gonna do. And that's the only thing that pisses me off about academia. It's like, I love, that's why I love trade schools or I really enjoyed, well, even my school wasted a bunch of my time, but it's like, I like the school that I went to because less than I feel like a lot of other schools. Cause like a guy like, like Russell, for instance, he, he's in a different boat because he really likes school. So he doesn't mind having to do a whole bunch of classes. But it's like, I've talked to so many medical students or people who are in medicine or, uh, well, my fucking dad's a doctor. I talk to him all the time. Not so much anymore, but um, but anyways, like even he, even he talked a lot about it. But it was, ju- it's just like, well, it's just to weed people out. It's just to, it's just to see who's dedicated enough to go through the bullshit. I like, guess, but it's like I, like I, I don't know. I feel like university is also a skill unto itself. Like you know, high school and university are told totally different ballparks. Totally different beasts. And, yeah, and like you, you have to be good at school to get through med school. So they have to be like they had to weed people out and like. All right, yeah. who's reading every single textbook and going to, like, 80% of the classes at least and, like, getting assignments done, like... Yeah, because they wanted to have... And med school and law school is, like, pres- prestigious for universities. They want to be, like, up about yeah. it. And so, like, if they're having a 90% um, uh, graduation rate, that's, like, will attract other better um, graduates. Mm-hmm. So, like, the better they can get, get that, like, the higher their... their uh, grades and the, the better they can get their uh, graduation rates like that's kind of their goal because I mean like they're also private businesses that want to make m- money like there, there's like there's ends of like education but like so they're still looking at those things so. oh absolutely yeah no no I, I don't have any doubt I more so I just think it's like there's still a whole bunch of time wasting, I think. I think yeah. there's a lot of classes they make you take, a lot of electives, a lot, a lot of shit that you don't need to, essentially. They yeah. could they could definitely achieve that goal of weeding people out in a year or two years or, or whatever they need and also make it valuable towards what they're learning. Like, there are just so many classes people are being forced to take, pay for, pay for textbooks for, uh, that it's just they're wasting yeah. such an amount of money and such an amount of time yeah. of these people where it's like, to me, it's ridiculous. That's what I hate about academia. And it's like you said, it's like, I, I'm fine with university in general. It's like, if you, there's so many people I know who are just like, I just like university, like you, for instance. I just like university. You just like the environment. You like the whatever. It's like, you don't give a fuck. You don't even care if there's an end goal. It's just like, just go to classes. And it's like, you can do it for the rest of your life. That's what you'd want to do. And like, I'm fine with that. That's what you want to do. And that they provide that. That's great. It's more so for the people who have very clear cut goals. It's like, I want to be a doctor. And it's like, 
how difficult some schools and some programs can make it for you to reach your end goal. Mm-hmm. And obviously it should be difficult, but I mean like the hoops this is too through. difficult. It's like it's this this hoops. is unnecessarily difficult. You're doing things that you're wasting these kids' time and it's and with certain programs and that's that's what pisses me off, is essentially like just just all the little fucking money grubbing things they have, like yeah. charging you hundred and twenty bucks for a book that should cost that production books. costs should cost books are 40 ridiculous. Bucks. They're yeah. so ridiculous. Well especially since yeah. it's like you need to do this edition. It's like yeah. what changed? Bullshit. It's like, oh we moved this chart from this page to the other page. Yeah, they, yeah that's what they like, do. I mean, honestly, was, I've, there's probably been hundreds of studies done by people to see just how badly they're scamming kids, oh. but it's like, it should be I even think about my English sued. Student. Like, they should be sued I because about, it's like, awful. I think about my English undergrad and I was like, I needed like a 100 level science, a 100 level this, 100 level that, a 200 level science. Like I needed a bunch of other shit. It's like, I was taking English and film studies because it was because I can excel at those Two subjects very easily. Yeah, I don't want to have to take a fucking a history credit and a, so why do I have to take that to get an English degree? What does that have anything to do with what? my ability to analyze film and literature? Well, like, preci- fuck you. Precisely, <laughs> and it's like I, I uh, other than just giving me dick, you need give us your money. Like, they uh, your money. there's a huge push in children's education now to essentially <laughs> a- adapt different teaching sty- styles because because that one thing that. I feel like we were kind of the last generation who didn't have access to this. We were, we were, we're not the last generation, but it, it's slowly getting better. But we definitely with us in school, it was, you take these classes with all these people, you learn the same thing as everybody else, and you take standardized tests, that's school. Like, there's no room for any sort of different, like, no, we're not adapting anything for you. It's like, you sit down and you take these tests and you do it this time, and like, that, that's school. See, that was my, that, my high school was very, the only positive thing was, I did have a choice. In, in a lot of things mm-hmm. like we because we had eight periods a day eight 50 minute periods yeah so you could take theoretically eight different classes oh I see so, I, I mean less about the classes like you had choice in classes but not as to how they were taught to you oh yeah no, no. you know what I mean oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like it's still I like you have to sit same. and learn and study notes and then you have yeah. to do a test on it like it, it was all the same for everybody across the board whoever was taking I that see, class I see what you're saying, yeah. whereas now from what I've heard in education and for kids they're trying to learn how kids learn because apparently kids and and people learn differently like some kids need to need to fidget when they're listening and it helps them to memorize better some kids work they verbally they they learn better when it's verbal some kids learn better when they read it's like there's all these different ways that kids learn and learn more effectively and i guess now in in elementary i i don't know much about high school but i know a little bit about elementary right now and uh-huh. apparently that's what they're doing in, in elementary. They're, they're trying to adapt these, these they're, they're trying to cater lessons or more towards how a child learns or like trying to take their needs into an account with, with when they're learning. And I, I, I don't know, I think I, that's good. I, like it's, it's something that I'm so, I feel like all of us are very unfamiliar with. Because obviously we weren't taught that way. It was we were we had to take class. We had to take a standardized test. It's like well, that's all we ever knew. Based the, the theory, the, I think the theory or the idea behind how it was taught now is, you learn how you study best for an exam, so you can take those study skills forward with you into future academia. Yeah. So if you if you learn really well by reading and like taking notes, then you do that to study. If you learn really well by whatever. For me, I'm a, I was very. I'm a very like audio audio is what what gets into my brain so talking it out having a conversation about it or like listening to for, I, when I was studying for my history exams I would just listen to like video like people talk about the, the different subjects that we were covering and that was enough to like help me just solidify it all in my brain so I think that style is a lot more effective because then it, it, it teaches kids the same thing it teaches them reinforces their own method for learning the best without forcing them to follow mm-hmm. one path. So it essentially achieves what, what the other thing did as well as not pressuring students to learn in a way that isn't comfortable for them. Yeah. It's, uh, and I, I've had this thought a lot, it's like do our standardized, because standardized tests are just a given right now. It's just like, you have to do them. Because it's like, everybody needs to be judged on the same board. We need to be able to judge everybody doing the same thing 
how else do we do we scale people? And it's like, do our standardized tests just this given? Should we just accept them as this given that it's like this is the way it has to be? Because how else do you, well, like, what do you mean judge standard, people? What do you mean standardized tests? Like you Canada, sit down with a with a no, 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 like in Canada, like I, other than like the like whatever like the grade three, six and nine testing, like I didn't have to ever take a departmental exam in high school. That's because all your teachers are credited, right? So they yeah. have credits exactly. in specific. So like, like, we were basically the same except for one or two, I remember. But I, by standardized tests, I mean le less on the government level, and I mean more like you have to take the exact same test as the guy sitting next to you. Oh, I see. And well, everybody else in your classroom. I think Should you be judged on the scale? It's What's the classic saying? But that's Do you why judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree? But I think that's why... That's why in a semester of a class, there's a div there's a diverse amount of things that you're being. It's like there can be. Though. There's yeah. There should be. I think yeah. like it shouldn't just be because there are people who just like suck at taking tests. Yeah. And I think a better way to do it would be you have these four major thing, five major things in the semester. And we'll say there's there's a test, there's an oral presentation, there's an essay, and there's Maybe, okay, two tests, or presentation, essay, and, like, just a, a, a project. A group, we'll say a group project, maybe. And instead of taking both, you have to take one of the tests, one of the test marks, and then, your, and then like, two of the other, your best, basically, your, your best three things are what you get graded on. Yeah, I see. So people who are good at taking tests can rock the tests. People who are good at orating and oral presentations, they, they can, that can be weighted differently. So it's like everyone is... Everyone has to participate in everything, but but why does everyone future, have to participate in everything? Because I think I think there, I think especially if you're going to continue on in academia, you are going to have to just face things like you're you're going to have to take tests that you don't want to take. You're going to have to. But I mean, once again, but that but that's what tests. I'm saying though, because that's at the fundamental level, that's the way it is now. But I mean, like, but but I mean, mean, like could, could we could we change it? But I mean, like, I think you could change it, but like then it's like at a, at a university level. The teacher is going to teach what they want to teach, how they want to teach it. Yeah, they're like, pretty ruthless in their like <laughs> their own. I, I had I had an English class that was almost entirely entirely oral presentations. But but there was one exam. That's and everything else. Was I guess that's that's what I'm saying. So though, it's like, like that's the way it is need, now. What I'm saying is, be could there be changes no. at the fundamental level to change in, that whole system in university? Like no, not for university. Yeah, think. professors are like super like. Like this classroom the, is my classroom. Exactly. The, and once they get there, that, like, get the whole the point—the yeah. whole point of becoming a professor is so that you can teach the subject how you want to teach it. Yeah, like so, at university as it is now. But I mean, like, could there be a system put in place, a new, a new? And this is—I'm just speaking so crazy speculative now. But it's like a thing that comes up that's not university, but it's another place where you can get the same certification that you could get at university, but you don't have to deal with all that crap. Where it's like you have to. You have to learn it the way the professor wants to teach you. You know what I mean? It's like we accept all these things because it's the way they are right now. And we're just like, well, you have to do tests because then you have to be able to learn in university because this is the way life is and this is the way reality is. But it's like that that's what I would have said back in elementary because like, that's the way I learned. I'm like, this is the way elementary school is, is. I have to do this to do this. But it's like now when I'm learning about how they're changing things in elementary as to how kids are learning, it's like could society yeah, more so yeah. change could could high school i don't know maybe high school is already changing i don't really know anything about high school right now but maybe high school i, I would bet if elementary schools are changing this much high schools are probably changing too but it's like could post-secondary also have a fundamental change in them or like at least a new type of post-secondary comes up that it's like people can yeah. now learn and be certified for the same thing but but not in just this one well, there's that narrow program. way that there's everybody that, is now there's that new program in denver where they get uh, I didn't read too much other than the headline but it was like you get a degree uh, a minimum wage job and access to uh, to a middle class salary at the end of it and all guaranteed a, and it's a free program yeah oh geez that's awesome yeah so, so you go in Denver? Like, like United States yeah it's in, it's in, I, mean, I think not sure if it's Denver it's in Colorado but wow um, I, I don't know too much about the program I just I, I read that literally that one snippet and it seemed intriguing but point being uh, the other thing is I think there is a student loan slash university bubble and that bubble is going to burst soon mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe not as much in Canada but in the states for sure yeah because student loans like you can't you, you can 
you you have that debt till you die. You can't pay it off yet. You, you if you if you go bankrupt, you still owe that debt. Mm -hmm. And if you die, somebody else owes that money. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. I'm sure that's how it works. I think it is. I I can't remember what I was watching, but I think if you die with debt, credit card debt, in the United no. States, I'm gonna say any debt. Like it doesn't just go away. Maybe, like your your maybe family US, members, I think, take the, on that debt. Well, your estate would, but not your family members yeah, no, directly. Yeah, the estate, yeah, because the estate has to pay out the debts and then whatever's left. But then you would leave. You, I don't think you can't leave a negative estate. I don't think. No, because that's a bankruptcy, right? Because yeah, like, and bankruptcy is when you just all your legally like your your debts are forgiven. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and yeah. It's, and it's written off to the all the companies write it off. Basically. Yeah. So essentially, if you die. With debt, you're bankrupt, but you're dead too. So yeah, they just sell your shit. And take the what's yeah. left. Yeah, like they, you can't leave it a negative estate, but you can leave your family nothing if you have too much debt. Yeah. Okay. I, I would assume I'm also just totally just assuming and talking on math, but it just doesn't make sense that like. No, because it's personally right. Like it's in it's in yeah. one's name. Like, although like let's say you still have a wife. Like if I died. In, because my estate passes to her. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. There I think I saw in a movie one time. There would have to be a mechanism to not have that. That would just be crippling. There would be so many people who would just be homeless then. Yeah. Because of that. It's yeah. like they would immediately inherit the debt of their like dad, who they had no idea was even a thing. It's like, yeah, like God kills himself because he's way too much debt, so now his family. <laughs> so like, is that his family? The all then his family all kills themselves. Kills themselves. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh. Debt. Ending family lines since whatever. Um, yeah, we were talking about people getting fired, and then we went on this education <laughs> tangent. Um, I, uh... Huh? Well, one, one last, actually, yeah, like, uh, tuitions. It's actually outrageous. outrageous. Um, from last year, tuitions were, what, like, $6,300? And this year, they jumped up to $7,400. That's like, a pretty radical increase. Yeah, $1,100 $1, in one year? Fuck that, that's ridiculous. That's... $1,100? $1,100. $1,100. One year? Yeah. One thousand one hundred dollars. Yeah. For one year of tuition. No, no, no like it was sixty three hundred last year for two terms. Oh, a, a jump of eleven $1, hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Which is well, like what percentage is that? That's quite a bit. Yeah. 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 Uh, like six, a sixth or a fifth, whatever that is. Twenty percent. Eighteen percent. Fifteen percent. Something like that. No, yeah. Well, do a little quick math. So plenty of times five is a hundred. So oh, yeah, it would be so like 15%. 15, it would be like yeah, between 15, 15 and 15. 15%. For, for student loans and for people like just with students and shit, uh, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking bullshit. Get that's those scholarship cool. kids. Yeah. How much, All time these fucking... How much time do we have left? Oh, still like 5, 10, 15 minutes. Um, yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy to think about now, but like I... Grab actually, another Adler, would you? Yeah, you want it's to right me, behind the kegerator. Grab me one too there, please, Thomas. Okay. Um... But yeah, I um, I actually had my first year of university for free. What? I won a raffle the first day of. Oh, that's cool. I no totally way. forgot about the story. Yeah. Um, oh, awesome. orientation week. My mom's like, there's a ticket. They were like five dollars a ticket. I'm like, oh, I'm not like, I never win anything. Like, fuck <laughs> this. She's like, no, I might as well put one in the free tuition box. That's what we did. Like it was at the end of o, o week, and I was trying to be like all like. I'm making a go of it at my new school. Like I'm gonna be involved, so involved in orientation week. So I'm there. I'm so involved. My voice is just fucking like I thrashed my voice from like doing all the chants and like yelling all week and just like having a blast. And plus, I was I wasn't 19 yet, so I couldn't go drink or anything. Um. Anyways, they're calling out the the things, and then so first was like it was like a I don't know. Four hundred, like five hundred bucks at the, the bookshop on campus, and then, or first, uh, the first one was like it's like an Xbox or something. The second one was like five hundred bucks at, on campus, and then the final one, first year tuition, and they called my name, and like I was sitting there like, stunned. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then someone like every like everyone in my group turns around and they're like, Doug, that's you. And they're calling my name again, and then I'm like, I stand up and I'm like, I'm trying, I try to go. Woo, like my voice is so hoarse that it just cracks so it's like woo, it's like this really awkward sound that comes out and then the entire gym just fucking erupts and 
Yeah, so I had my first year totally for free. Fuck yeah. And then I only went for one more year. Yeah. So my education was actually pretty cheap. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a, yeah, that's decent. That's But, man, that's such a, like, that's such a thing you can just hold over your parents. It's like, if you just, if you're educated, because that's just such a, like, like, for me, and I, (laughs) lots of people like my parents pay for my education i feel like a lot of people's parents if you're if you're if you're well off and if you're lucky like me your parents pay for education it's just like if they're in that position to pay for education they don't have to you're just like fuck you fuck yeah. you what well, was crazy because like because of how relatively cheap my school was <clears throat> um i have i have still have tons of resps that i haven't used that now i'm like Oh, there's a filmmaking program in New York that I'm going to take. And mm-hmm. like, the other thing is, like, I'm going to use as much of those as I can, and then I can just transfer them over to Drew. Yeah. So these contributions that were made for me, it's like I have enough to like my my parents are like, yeah, you have enough to like go to school in the states if you want to go to school in the states. Mm-hmm. I'm like, All right. So I don't know. I'm gonna. It's it's kind of cool that I didn't waste them on a fucking English undergrad, and now I can use them for something that I might want to do. Like I'm potentially looking at there's the sound recording program that they have at the Rise Institute or whatever. So I'm looking at that potentially and I'm looking at the New York Film Academy has um, three, four, and six week programs in LA, in New York, in Italy, and all over the world Mm -hmm. and all of them qualify for RESPs. Mm -hmm. So I could go have all my living expenses and everything covered for like six weeks, a six week trip to New York or a six week trip to wherever. Yeah. All because I didn't fucking piss away in <laughs> school on a shitty English film studies degree. Sorry if you're in English and film studies. I'm sorry if you have that degree. No, don't say sorry. I don't. I feel I feel bad for you. <laughs> I feel bad for you. Apologizing to you. It's like unless I, you're, unless I, you're going to law school, I feel bad for you. Like, I I remember the book that like changed my whole outlook on education and film essentially was or like how to, how to do film and how to do education was I, I read Kevin Smith's book what the fuck was it called ah uh, now it's some yeah it's shit in the title I can't remember exactly <laughs> what the title of the book was I have it in my in my room I want to borrow that if you have it it's, re- like it's a really it. good book it's very funny he, he he I have the newer one though he had a, he had an old like the newer one's better but the, the older one's the one I read first I, I can't remember what that one was called but um, there's a section of the book that he talks about his film school experience and essentially like just intelligent just a very smart idea he had that was like tough shit the whole, like, boring ass th- life t- tough, 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 tough shit yeah that's the one um he he sort of thought outside the box and it like it really really inspired me and that I, I'm gonna say that that's like 70% of the reason that I came back and did this was because of that or it came back to Saskatchewan and did this well yeah cause, um, he, cause he, he did the first semester of film school he did the first because it's because it's two years, I think, or maybe it was just the first semester. Yeah, you're, maybe you're right, but I I, I can't remember. So yeah, yeah, I did the, the first semester, whatever, first, whatever. Film school, and then and instead of going back, yeah, because he because because yeah. essentially, I guess back in the day, because he went to Vancouver Film School too, but I guess back in the day, I guess it's similar to now. Um, he he had the choice where it was like I could either do my next term or whatever, or I could take the ten thousand dollars because I think it was twenty thousand dollars for whatever the program, yeah. and he was like I could either finish the program have no money or I think I know how to make a movie already so I think I learned enough I know what I need to know to make a movie so then he just took the ten thousand dollars he had left quit school and he made clerks oh yeah and it was just sort of that I mean like everybody I feel like every filmmaker says it and I feel like people just don't listen but it's like they're just like the the biggest thing is to make that plunge and it's just, just like shit. just do it at the end of the day Trial and, and it, error, yeah. yeah and it's just like when, when I when I I don't know when I heard that it would just like made it easy whereas I feel like so many people make it hard it's yeah. like they they like I have to follow this ladder and I have to work on Planet of the Apes as I, a have grip. To, I have to be a grip <laughs> on Planet of the Apes movies until <laughs> I've put 20 years in yeah and, and then, then then they'll give me a shot at being yeah. the first AD right? yeah and then so I'll be the first AD and then, and then when I'm 10 more years at that when I'm 64 <laughs> I'll get to make that $15,000 Low budget indie movie that I wanted to make, and then when I'm 75, I'll get, I'll get my, my shot. I'll get my shot at a made for TV movie. <laughs> made for TV movie, and then if I can keep living when I'm 90, I I'll get, get that get two million dollar <laughs> budget. Um, but it's just like, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's like, and it's like Robert Rodriguez. I, his biography is actually really good for this too. I, Rebel Without a Crew, I think that one's called. You should borrow that one too. It's it's a, it's, a, it's a very inspirational read as well. He made his first movie on seven thousand dollars, and like had medical experiments done on him so that so that he could make that money. But once again, he was another guy who was like never went to film school. He was just like, I'm just gonna take this money, and I'm pretty sure I can make a movie with this money. Like I'm pretty sure. <laughs> And they just did it. And, like, that was, at the so, end of the day, so, that was... So, basically, what you're saying is, why the fuck haven't we made a movie yet? <laughs> that is absolutely what I'm saying. I, I mean, and I've, and, I, and I've said this many times, I think the, the reason that I came back to Saskatchewan, or the reason it felt so right to me was, like, yeah, same, but very much same Saskatchewan thing. just, and doing this, and, like, being here, like, this very much felt like the type of environment where that can be done. Like, you can yeah. make a movie and be 20... I guess I'm 23 <laughs> right away, but it's like you can be in your early 20s and you can make a movie, and and yeah. for no money and like that, that's something that you can do and like potentially have it be successful and like this is an environment where people will cater to that need or cater to that desire, whereas like so many people they move to LA, they move to Vancouver, they move to Toronto, and it's like these are not the places for this. These are ama- the reason these cities are amazing and are known as film cities is because million multi million studios with hundreds of billions of dollars go there. Because they can film there because it's like that. that's what they do there and that's, that's why they're where you, That's too. where you go when you've proven yourself and you have a budget. Yeah, when, once right? a studio like, gives you $200 million to go make a movie, yeah, fucking go to Vancouver because like you can go there now. Yeah. But it's like, don't... I'm trying to think of a good analogy, but it's like... It's like that, it's like that story of the... the it's like a, I don't know where it's from. It's like the two the two shoe salesmen who go to who go to Africa and the one guy calls back and he's like, ugh, like... Don't bother coming out here. Nobody wears nobody wears shoes out here. Like, fucking bum market. And the other guy's like, none of them have shoes yet. None of them have shoes yet. Like, send send over everything. Like, we can. There's like, it's a fucking gold mine out here. Yeah. And I think that in a lot of ways, a market like Saskatchewan is like that. It's like, oh well, there's no major things going on here, so don't think. I guess it can't be done. Mm-hmm. Or, and I I the yeah. the analogy I was just thinking about in my head. Was kind of like a video game analogy. Um, okay, that works too. So, uh, I'm trying to think of a good video game to use as a video game analogy. But it's uh, let's. Uh, what what's a game that like you get into level? You get in, you can only go into certain areas once you're a certain level. Like what's a game like that? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you have to yeah. level up in video games. Yeah, like Grand Theft Auto has like. Level. No, that's not the a good example. The division would have been a good one. You have to... No, that's not a good example. Well, maybe maybe that's a good example, but it's like... Okay. Well, let, let's say... Let's, 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 let, let's, like. let's say that there's an area of a map where you have to be level 40 to be able to go and play okay. there. You can go well, in at level World, 1. World of Warcraft. Yeah, World of Warcraft. Actually, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. There are certain areas of that game... So fucking dirty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'm trying to think of an analogy. But it's like, okay, so Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. There are certain areas that you can go to right when you're level one. The whole map you can go to right when you're level one. Yeah. You're going to get your fucking shit pushed in at 90% of those places and you're going to die. Mm. And I feel like people who stay in Vancouver, stay in Los Angeles, they stay in Toronto. These are those people who are like, I'm level one, but I'm going to make a go of it. In Hyrule Castle, I'm going to fight Ganon. And it's like... You're gonna have to, you're gonna sit there and you're gonna yeah. be trying to do that for 50 years because that is not the environment for you to succeed. Whereas there's those guys, they stick in the fucking the Great Plains and they're level one. They level up slowly. They're like, this is a place I can succeed. I can get. We're, I can. We're gonna kill boars. <laughs> we're gonna kill boars. <laughs> Until like, we reach level. F- and they're the guys. Yeah. And then the Saskatchewan yeah. to me is that it's like it's like this is not the big. This is Saskatchewan isn't the big time. Like this isn't where like. May, we can make it to the big time, maybe, but it's like, but this is where you can be successful with less, like with less mm-hmm. money, with less equipment, with less, less competition. Less com- there's less competition. There's all like it, it's more. It, it's more if you're freedom, more, more freedom. It, yeah, it, it's just more a, support. it's a it's a better place to be successful, and so many people don't see it that way. And and uh, I don't know. I I just it's yeah. but it but it to me it seems very logical and it seems like it, the right move and like. That's why it was very easy for me to make that decision. Because it just... In Vancouver, I won't be able to make a feature film. Like, that's not a, that's not a, that's not a thing I would be able to do. But what about Kickstarter? You could do a really awesome Kickstarter video and campaign. Mm-hmm. That's true. Nope. <laughs> nope. And maybe you could get the... 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 Yeah, just fucking... Like, the amount of Kickstarters and stuff, like you're saying, that I've just seen from friends of mine... That it's just like nobody pays attention because it's like nobody gives a fuck about your Kickstarter I in Vancouver. Think, I think Alex 
Chanted made a really good point about Kickstarter and his strategy for that. And I was like, I think this, this Kickstarter, especially creative ones that succeed, are the ones that aren't the, aren't the ones that are like, hey, like we haven't actually done anything, but like we need like hundred thousand dollars to get started. Yeah, and it's yeah. the ones that are like, we got the train moving, we got this and this and this to show you. We just need X amount of money for a specific part of our budget. Yeah, yeah. and those are the ones that like that do well because it's not like hey like there's this thing that we could in theory do if we had a I mean and it's like who are you who are you targeting your Kickstarter at because once again it's like if you're if you are targeting your Kickstarter like let's say you're trying to start a series in Vancouver where there's hundreds of series being filmed all the time and there's such a saturation people are not interested in a new series there it's that you have no I'm sorry you think you have this beautiful new idea and you're beautiful and you're amazing and you know, everything, maybe, maybe everything's is. amazing. Maybe, maybe it is. is. Maybe yeah. it is. But it's like you think that you think that your idea is so incredible. And maybe it is. But it's like you're you're trying to raise money in an environment that is so saturated with people trying to do the same thing and people who have done the same thing that it's just like why? Why why would you ask people for money in a place that they're like, We don't give a fuck that you're trying to make a movie. Everybody's trying to make a movie. Guess what, kid? Everybody's trying to make a movie. It's like I don't give a shit. It's like, why not, in Saskatchewan, for instance, like, you start a Kickstarter for a feature film, it gets people excited here. You say, I'm going to film in Swift Current. I'm going to film at this place. That place is like, fuck yeah, that's, that's so lovely. cool. They're filming yeah. a movie. Come they for they, free. They, <laughs> they, they help to, to do stuff. It's like, yeah, this actually, is Actually, sh- no, it sucks filming out here. Sucks. Don't come. I mean, it's nobody's not. ever going to listen. Nobody will, I guarantee you, yeah, nobody will no ever chance. listen to this. Ever, no. ever, ever. Because they're like, no, no, I'm just telling you, L.A. is the place to be. L.A. is where it's at, man. It's like everybody's going to stick with that attitude because it's like people just can't. It. Kevin Smith went to fucking New... He lives right on Manhattan's doorstep. That's where shit happens. He goes to New Jersey. That's where he makes clerks. If, if anybody... I guarantee you, if it, like, he would have been like, yeah, I'm making clerk. I'm making a movie in New Jersey. Everybody would have been like, ha. Ha, ha, ha. That's not <laughs> where movies... That's not where... Yeah, you're yeah. making a porno? That's not where movies are made. It's like shit like that. It's just like... You gotta. Movies are not a complicated beast. It's like, it's it it's it's people. It's wardrobe. It's effects. It's 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 a script. Like it, it's a very <laughs> like. You've already described a very complicated. Beast. No, no, well, I mean, I guess I guess yeah, if you if, if you know about it, it's like it's. No, I, I it's would, moving, I it's saying, moving parts that build a whole. It's like you, you break it down to its parts. It's all very doable things when you when you get it down to its parts. But yeah. people think there's this intangibility <laughs> to a movie that it has to be done in LA. It has to be done in Vancouver. But there's no intangibility in a movie. There's, it's all tangible. It's all stuff you can figure out. It's all, you can break everything down. Every you, every problem is one that has a solution. Yeah, and then if you you're can, creative enough. And it doesn't matter if you're Vancouver. It doesn't matter if you're here. You can solve it in both places. Like it doesn't. Your location doesn't dictate. No, I mean what it, you can do. It, the only maybe what this, you have access this is rather, to. This is rather obvious, but it's like it would tough to be a do, to do a series about LA <laughs> in New York, or <laughs> 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 right like. I mean, Other than like <laughs> specifics like that, it's, yeah. But I mean, and, and once again, it's it, 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 once again. But I mean, it, once again, the, the the obvious solution there is like, well, can you change LA to New York? And does your store still work? And it's like, of no. Course, yeah. It's like, no. I need fucking what's the beach called? Fucking, I need Venice like, Beach. I need Venice Beach. Like it has to be there. It's like this one guy that I know through family. He's like knows that I'm like I work in the film industry at all. And he's like one of those guys, like fresh out of film school. He's like. Yeah, I had the script. I was wondering, like, if you had any contacts. <laughs> I remember that. I had, he sent me this. He's like, it's, it's so unique. It's, like, the most unique thing ever. I think it could really go far. And then I read it, and it's, like, the first thing, like, the tag, it's, like, The Office meets um, meets a film set. And it's, like, the most generic film school I like that pitch, idea. actually. <laughs> The, the, the pitch. I, I enjoyed that bit. The, just your little pitch there. The yeah. office meets film, film set. I like that. It sounds good. It sounds funny. Awesome. It is, but the thing is, the way he, and you know what? I, I don't hate it. It's probably not the idea. This never. It's usually never yeah. just the idea. It's just like it's the. Well, the idea wasn't terrible. It was uh, well, the idea was, that there was just like director, and he wanted to he, he thinks that he's making this serious film and the crew has to steer it in the direction of being a comedy to make the film work without the director knowing oh yeah is the idea is like the overarching idea that's like, funny it could be a film or it could be a, a series and 
the way it's just like the way that he pitched like there was like a one sheet it's like networks this would do well on it's like HBO Showtime well it's more just like, like it's like you can tell when somebody just doesn't have any idea how the process works I guess of pitching or like yeah. I think it's just like 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 I said yeah, just, just what you said it's like I funny yeah, idea yeah. That could, that's funny that, could be, that like, could be funny but I mean like you but, say, to be fair it's like the office meets hog farming it's like, you can just do anything. Yeah, it's true. It's true. You, you can say the office meets anything because, it's because like, immediately your connotation is the office, and the office is a funny show. And then so you can like, you can and you can apply the office to anything. They applied it to a fucking paper company. That's the whole point of the office was the fact that it was like it's it a show matter. about a paper company, it didn't matter and it's still it incredible. Yeah. Like it, yeah, it doesn't matter what you apply that style of comedy to. It works with anything. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I guess that that kind of buries that <laughs> there because it's just it works with everything, but um. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Fuck, that's funny because it, it's it's like what they say that the the golden ticket back in the day was you used to say Jaws meets something. If, if you want to get a horror movie made to a studio, you would say, "Oh, it's Jaws in this." They say famously, they say that that's how I think Alien got made. They said that it's Jaws in space, and then that's how Alien got made was because they were like, "Well, Jaws, that's fucking money right there. That's a blockbuster." Now it would be money. We'll give it. <laughs> now it would be like it's Paranormal Activity meets. This. Paranormal Activity 2. It's Paranormal Activity beats Paranormal Activity 2. <laughs> Dude, that's gonna make a lot of money. Holy shit, that's a money maker <laughs> right there. Shit, oh my goodness. So it's like Super Ghosts? <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> um, we're gonna make it for negative amounts of money. Um, we're gonna get people to pay us to be in the movie. <laughs> and then we're gonna sell tickets to the movie. <laughs> it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's so much money. There's gonna be ghosts, um, there's gonna be shitty camera angles and shitty cameras. I mean, I feel like we're leaving it on not much of a revelation. Uh, and, and, Do we and, ever leave and, it? No, <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes when we get to a point. I mean, like, I feel like we, we, we've talked about this a lot. We, we have this talked about is we've, we've talked about a lot. We rest is death. We always say that, like, this is a great place for filmmaking. And I feel like... Moral of the story, I think, is... We need to fucking put our money where our mouth yeah. is, is my thing. It's like, we keep shut saying this. I and think like, shut the fuck up. Moral of the story yeah. is... I'm feeling kind of bad about it now. We're, we're the greatest... We're so smart. We made the best decision ever. Um, we're good looking. We're so good. We're so good looking. Yeah. Especially is, especially me. Um, this is good. Like let's, let's end it on a would you rather here. Okay. Um, I got two of them that are like, they're not gross at all, but they're, they're ones that actually had made me think. So would you rather always be 15 minutes late or always be two hours early? Two hours early. To everything. Two <laughs> oh. hours early. I like being early. I gotta say, I would. It, it's tough because like. And I think I, I hate, already do that. I hate being late more than anything, yeah. but I also hate being way too early because it's, it's almost the same thing. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, for you, being two hours early is a serious inconvenience. <laughs> yeah. Um, but two hours early, like at least. I mean, fifteen late minutes late is like a nice amount of time because I mean, it's like there's, bad. there's, I can't think of a, a lot of situations where being fifteen minutes late is going to be that bad. Your child's birth. <laughs> oh, once uh, again, it's. I mean, like for you, that's shitty because you missed it. But I mean, who I else didn't... is going to care? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, like, unless you're a fucking doctor who's like, this guy's going to die in ten minutes. Yeah. You need to be here. Plus, uh, fifteen minutes, I also feel like is a. I mean, you get fired, you, you I guess, pretty, from something. You could pretty easily explain that with. Just about any excuse. It's like, oh, flat tire. Yeah, anything. Oh, like, miss my miss snooze on my alarm. I got a good would you rather for the next one. Okay. Uh, last one, just because I, I said I did, did say I have two. Would you rather live without without internet or without heating slash AC? Heating AC. Heating AC. Oh, that was so tough for me, like... I love the internet. It's just like I've mostly lived in places without heating or AC. <laughs> no, you had heating. Like, you had to have heating. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, right. Yeah, I've right. never had AC. Like, but you would heating. die. In, in Canada, you would heating. die. Oh, you needed a lot of blankets. I guess you could start a garbage fire. <laughs> and you start a fire in your, in your house. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would make winter and inviting people over during winter very weird. But, but I mean, I, I don't know. I, just I, get, I a, get, a, I just get, get a place with a fireplace, I guess. Yeah. I got to say, yeah, heating, heating or AC, because, like, I can't live without it. I was going to say, you like, could have just said basic, Netflix, and basic, I would have been like, ah. Basic, basic yeah. hierarchy of needs. Internet. Internet. <laughs> well, that's like, that means it's unnecessary. Internet. Food and water. Shelter. <laughs> anyway, um, is that? Yeah, yeah, that's totally time. We're I think we're five minutes over. 
All right, so that is episode 73 of the Prehistoric Podcast. Uh, I'm Francois Nation. I'm some guy, and he's some other guy. Thanks and for having we'll me. We'll catch again. you next episode. We'll yes. see you next time.